Hey, it's Casey here from BlueHouseDigital.com, coming to you with another exciting After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about the Audio React feature in Trap Code Form by Red Giant Software. Uh, before we dive into the tutorial, I just wanted to give you kind of a brief rundown of our next week's tutorial. We're going to be building liquid layer meshes using RealFlow 5 and Cinema 4D. Uh, it's going to be a really awesome tutorial. You definitely don't want to miss that, so tune in next week. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to say that the motion graphic at the beginning of this video is going to be covered in its entirety uh, at, in the second part of this tutorial. Uh, the second part, we're going to really be looking at the 3D text uh, aspects of using form and using multiple layer maps to build really awesome motion graphics that also use Audio React. The first part of this tutorial, we're going to be creating something like this. So for the beginning part of this tutorial, we're just going to talk about the Audio React feature within Trap Code Form. Uh, in the second half, we'll dive into building the base form, uh, changing your particle types, using quick maps, and pre-composing your layer maps. Uh, so for the time being, I was going to open up a new composition, and we'll hop right into Audio React. Okay, so I started a new After Effects project. I'm going to go up to Composition, New Composition. And I'm going to use the preset uh, PAL D1DV widescreen square pixel right down here. Uh, I'm just going to leave the duration here at 15 seconds. Okay. And I'm going to add a background layer. So layer new solid. Name this BG background. Layer new solid again. This is going to be my form layer. And I'm going to go... I have imported a, a little riff I made up in Ableton Live. Uh, one of the things that you should keep in mind when you're doing Audio React, you're going to have a lot of troubles uh, processing MP3 files for some reason or another uh, after effects and uh, the Audio React feature has a lot of trouble with MP3s. So this is a 44 kilohertz 16-bit WAV file which is an ideal file uh, when you're using trap code form. So just keep that in mind. So I have the form layer selected. I'm just going to go down to Effect, Trap Code, Form. And we're going to get into building base form, particle, quick maps, and layer maps in the, uh, in the next tutorial. Uh, right now, I'm just going to really focus on just the Audio React feature. But just to use uh, as a talking point, I'm going to open up one of the many uh, presets that form comes with. And I'm just going to go and choose uh, TF2 Spiral Array HD and you can see it's just kind of this cool looking spinning array exactly like its name um, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna make it react to my Ableton riff so I'm gonna select my form layer and underneath the audio react tab we're gonna go choose our Ableton riff of three so now you can hear if you do a quick RAM preview, that there is some movement Oop. that's going, and it looks like it, it automatically mapped to displacing in the Y direction. So this will give you a quick idea of um, what Y displacement does. And then I'm going to get into talking about each one of the parameters, the time offset, frequency, width, threshold, strength, and all of that. So um, let's just see this real quick. Not very cool. So let's talk about getting the uh, the type of look that you're going for, and that really comes from understanding what these parameters do. So the time offset, uh, it defaults to zero, but uh, pretty much this determines how many seconds before or after the playhead that the plugin begins to analyze your audio sample. So if it's a negative value, it's going to analyze behind the playhead. If it's a, a positive value uh, in seconds, it's going to analyze uh, in front of the playhead. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're feeding information into these reactors. I'm going to leave that at zero for right now. The frequency and width, these are two really important parameters. Uh, they basically choose a particular band of sound. So right now they default to uh, a band of sound between or 80 hertz and with a width of 20 hertz. So this is how you can isolate your mid-tones or your bass or just any part of your, your audio file by uh, having the plugin analyze just certain bands of sound. 
um, the way that it th this whole plugin calculates is pretty much it takes the loudness from whatever time offset you've set up uh, at that particular time it takes that loudness and it multiplies it by our strength factor so right here underneath threshold you can see the strength and if you increase this you'll obviously uh, get a, a much larger uh, output than you would normally. So I'm going to map to particle size. By default, trap code form uh, defaults to uh, a particle size of 5, okay? And I'm going to map this to particle size, so we're going to feed information from uh, from the Ableton Rift, from the sound file, and it's going to be multiplied by a strength factor of 50, and then that number is going to uh, be multiplied by the particle size, which is 5, and it's going to come up with an output. It's going to look like it's actually getting brighter, but it's actually a increase in particle size is, that's happening instantaneously. So. Okay, so I think you get that a little bit. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can map. You can map to particle size, you can map to uh, particle opacity. Uh, we're going to we're gonna do particle opacity opacity on reactor 2. Uh, your X, Y, and Z displacement, that's uh, pretty much it creates a value for it to either move along the x-axis back and forth, the y-axis up and down, or in Z space. So what I like to do with a lot of music is I use a lot of displace Z because it kind of has that pumping effect like a speaker, but you know that's just my particular preference. Um, the delay max and the delay direction are also two really important ones. If you're trying to get any sort of ripple effect in a visualization, um, these are the two things that you, you kind of really need to understand. The delay max, uh, if it's set to zero, will trigger the particle size immediately or whatever it's mapped to. Um, but if you kind of want a ripple effect, you want to delay this and then add a delay direction. So I'm going to just do a, an inwards delay direction. And I'm going to bring this up to 0.4. So 0.4 seconds, there's going to be a, a delay between the, the direction of the animation. You'll see. Even rendering at half resolution, it takes a while. But with this, you should be able to see a little bit of some kind of jello-y movement, something very, uh, very kind of flowing and organic. So here we go. So you can see you get a, a little bit of a, like a, a spin going in. If I up this even more, um, I'll do 0.9 on the next time. But that should give you a, a pretty basic understanding of what these audio reactors do, or the parameters. But you have five audio reactors that all feed into each other. So say we wanted to do a particular effect, maybe I'll offset this to negative uh, 0.3 seconds. So we'll do a negative uh, time offset on reactor one. We'll do a positive 0.3 seconds. We're gonna change the frequency range. So the frequency range from the first one was 80 to 20 hertz uh, with a width of 20. This is a frequency of 800, and I'm going to do a width of, hmm, I'll do a width of 60. My strength factor, well, if I'm going to be mapping this to particle opacity, like I said, you'll notice that uh, we're getting a, a lot of brightness as this kind of the beat drops. And I, it's happening because we have too much strength. Because that remember our loudness is multiplied by our strength factor and then by our particle opacity. So I'm going to bring this down to 30. Ooh, there we go. And now I'll add a little bit of depth so you can still see some motion as this is as this is going. Um, delay direction I'm going to do in uh, in outwards because I did inwards on the, uh, the reactor one. So we'll see what the opposite of that will do. Uh, and we'll add a delay direction or delay max of, let's say, 0.5, okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick RAM preview. I'll be right back here in just a sec to show it off. 
Okay, so the ramp preview is almost finished. I just wanted to say I created a third reactor and I mapped it to the Z offset. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to uh, have the animation kind of pump out towards the, the camera. I added a camera as well um, as the frequency, sound frequency is between uh, 100 frequencies and 50 or 100 hertz and 50 hertz width. Uh, begin to peak. So you'll kind of see a little bit of a pumping action happening there. Uh, if you want it to pump towards the camera, you need to make it a negative strength value. So I made it a negative 300 strength value. If you did it a positive 300, it would actually pump backwards. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it for you right now real quick. So that should just give you a, a pretty good idea of uh, how some of these parameters work and how these uh, reactors can work in tandem. Uh, now I'm going to head over and start our uh, next tutorial on 3D text in trap code form. We're also going to be using two separate form layers, uh, one as a layer maps to create a really cool effect. Uh, we're going to be talking more about some of these other parameters. Uh, we're going to be building the base form from the ground up, so you'll get to learn about um, you know, some of these awesome parameters and uh, base form settings in trap code form, uh, and then quick maps, layer maps, and our particle. So hopefully you found this uh, informative, helpful. Um, you know, please comment, rate, subscribe. I, th I th want to thank everyone for their continued support on this channel. Uh, and stick around next week. We're going to be building liquid layer meshes in Cinema 4D and Real Flow 5. So uh, thanks for tuning in.